Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin'. Thank you so much for being here. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything that I do when I put up a new video. That way you will get notified. Um, if you are a longtime member, thank you once again for tuning in. It means so much to me. And I also want to thank everyone for being patient with me uh, after my fall a week ago Saturday. Um, I'm still having difficulty moving, so I'm a little slower. If you hear me wince, it's because my ribs are still very, very tender, and sometimes it hurts to take a deep breath, but I do feel like I'm on the mend, so I'm going to do my best to try to get back on a schedule, whatever that looks like. But today we're going to work with the Sentimental Wishes, and this is a really cute stamp and die set. It comes as a bundle. It's a small stamp set, but it does a lot. And um, we are going to use the stocking. I've already taken it out. I have it mounted on a block because we're going to be stamping that, and we're going to be using the die cut to cut it out. We're also going to use the Peaceful Season for the sentiment, and I'm going to use the word um Mary and the big word Christmas and I made a uh, prototype uh, card and I'm going to show you that in a minute there's also the peaceful season does which gives you which gives you the word Christmas um and you can cut it out but I'm I think I'm just going to stamp it today so I don't think I'll be using those but I wanted to show you it does have coordinating dies with it I also pulled in perennial postage, and I used the two larger um, rectangles, not the larger, but the largest of the small ones. So, and I'll show you how I did how I used those. And I also have an exposed brick 3D embossing folder. So the first thing I want to show you is I want to show you a sample of the card that I did. And I thought this turned out so pretty. And you're probably wondering, where did you get that background paper? That's actually a piece of vellum. And I made that using a technique with alcohol and alcohol markers. And I've done this before on my channel, but I haven't brought it um I haven't brought it back in quite a while, and I thought this was the perfect card for me to do that. So let's get started with our pieces. And I think I'm going to start out with my piece of vellum. Now, this piece of vellum is four and four and this is four and a quarter by five and a half. And we're going to just grab some markers. So grab your, um, I want to get the darker colors. So I'm going to do a cherry toddler. I'm going to use a shaded spruce, blueberry. Bushel and how about a wild wheat? And I chose the dark of each of these markers. So all I want to do is I want to put down some color. Before I get started, I have a little this little well that I use, and it's just a, a condiment, a condiment cup, and I'm gonna I'm going to pour in some 91% isopropyl alcohol. The 91% works much better than 70 or the 50. So I think the higher your alcohol, the, the better it activates with your alcohol ink. So we have that ready. And I'm going to grab just a standard um, paintbrush. Just something that you can use to drop the alcohol onto your ink. So I'm going to use the brush tip and I'm just going to make some circles of color. Like that. I'm going to take my blue, and I think the blue one, I'm just going to do some squiggles like this, and you want them to be everywhere, you know, just random. So 
Okay, we've got down some blue. I'm going to grab that uh, shaded spruce. And again, all of these are the darker colors. And let's put a little bit of that right here. You're probably thinking, that doesn't look very attractive. And no, it doesn't. But once we put that alcohol on it, the colors are going to run. They're going to swirl. And they are going to be absolutely breathtaking. So I'm going to put some wild wheat. I love the wild wheat because it looks like gold. And then we're going to go ahead and start with our, our alcohol. I'm going to dab my brush into that alcohol and then I just want to drop it. Drop it all over your vellum. Now this is the stamping up vellum. I have tried this technique with other vellum and it did not work as well as the stamping up vellum. And um, I have several videos showing the, me using different types of vellum. But I find that this technique with the stamping up vellum works the best. And now I'm going to pick this up. So I want my colors to run just a little bit. And you can see when you pick it up, you're going to get some running of color. So just move it around. Let those colors do their thing. And you'll never have one of these that look the same. They will always appear different depending on your colors and how much alcohol they have a tendency of having a mind of their own. And I love that about this technique. Now I think that looks really pretty. I'm going to sit my alcohol over here out of the way. And just lay that there with it. I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to turn this on and I'm just going to draw the paper a little bit. So I'm putting it on one. And you can use that to move your color. See how it's moving that red? I'll crank it up to two. Turn it over and heat the other side so that it lays flat. And then turn that off. Now, while that is still warm, you're going to want to stick it up underneath something. So I'm just going to take my, my stack of stamps and I'm going to just lay that down over top of it and let that sit for, for just a bit. So let's bring our other pieces back. And while that is getting flat underneath the weight, we are going to start looking at our pieces. Now this piece is for our sentiment and this piece is one and three eighths by four. One and three eighths by four. And then this is the piece that we're gonna to use to cut our stocking out of. So we're gonna stamp that and then these are the two die pieces that I cut. And we're just going to stack those on top of each other. And that's going to give us a focal point for our stocking. So let's go ahead and do some stamping. Let's stamp this in our Memento Tuxedo Black. And the reason I'm using the, the memento is because I am going to use alcohol markers on this. So we're going to want that to have a nice, rich image. And we want to be able to use the markers. So let's stamp that down right there. Give it a good press. And there is our stocking. 
So I'm going to grab some colors. I want a real red. Shady spruce. Dark Highland Heather. Let's start out with these and we can add some more colors as we go. We're also going to be using the gold or the wild wheat and the blueberry bushel. Oh, and one other color I want apathy. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to color my stocking. And to do that, I want to use my light, um, real red. And I'm going to start out with the bullet tip. And because I just want to outline around my stocking. Now I'm going to, since I got that edge outlined, I'm going to come in now with my brush tip and I'm just going to do a fill in. I'm going to come in with my dark real red and I'm going to use my brush tip and where the darkness is on the stocking, the shadowing, I'm just going to go over it and around the edges a little bit. You can see it's a little lighter in the middle, and that's okay. We're going to come back again with the light real red, and we're going to blend. And there is our stocking. Uh, and then I want to come in with my ivory. And I'm going to do the top of my stocking in ivory. This kind of gives it an older, rustic look. It's sort of a creamy ivory. And I'm going to do the heel and toe. Like so. Then we're going to do what is always a little tedious, and that is our packages. So I think what I want to do is I'm going to use my dark uh, shaded spruce. And I want this little package to be green, but I want the bow to be red. So I'm just going to come in. And this does not have to be perfect. It's tiny places and it's hard to get perfection, but it will give you the gist of it. Like that. And then I'm going to take the real red and I'm going to color my bow. Something like that. Then the candy canes, I'm just going to kind of stripe them. And let's do the ribbon down the middle. And that's our little green and red one. Now let's do one over here that is blue. Let's do this little one right here into a blue. I use the wild wheat to make the little um, 
ribbon on that one. And I want this one back here to be wild wheat, so it'll look like it's a gold package. We can come in with our red and get this a nice red bow and ribbon. I'm doing my Highland Heather over here. I got a blue go on that. The only thing we've got left to do is our red on our little candy cane. And there is our stocking all cut. So we're going to go into the dyes. And I'm going to pull out my little stocking die. And we're going to run this through our stamp and cut and emboss machine and cut this out. We have quite a few little steps on this particular um, card, but I think you can enjoy all the techniques and hopefully you'll learn something a little a little bit as you go. I'm going to move my markers over here out of my way. And I'm going to grab my little Stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I'm going to put this in like so. And just bring it through. And there is our stocking. How cute is that? So that is done. So now let's look at our card base. This is eight and a half by five and a half. And I scored it at four and a quarter. So we can just fold that in half. Grab our bone folder. And give it a good varnish. And y'all know I like to do both sides. Gives me a nice flat area for my card. And then here is that pretty um, piece of paper we did. And look at the difference when you lay it down on white versus red. See the difference? So I want to put this on a piece of white paper, but I need to trim it down a little bit. So let's bring our trimmer. This was four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm going to trim off my edges. And because I want this to be four by five and a quarter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down on the white cardstock because I love that that look. I think it gives it a really clean, neat look. And to put this down, I'm going to use my mini glue dots. People always say, what's the best way to put vellum down with? And I like the mini glue dots. Um, it seems like it shows less than anything else. So I'm going to take and pull one dot, and I'm just going to put it right in the corner. I'm going to use four of them, one in each corner. Then we are ready to put this on to our white uh, cardstock. So to get it nice and even, they are cut the same size, four by five and a quarter. 
We're going to hold it. Okay, what? Well, let's just let's just do it like that. I'm just tapping it, and then I'm going to run my fingers along the corners. I didn't put one on that corner. How did I miss a corner? Not a problem. It's easy to put in a glue dot. So there we go. Now this one's going to look quite different than the one I did earlier. Look at the difference. It depends on how much ink you put down and exactly how you do your run. So like I said, you'll never get two that look identical. So now what I want to do is I want to put this in the middle and this in the middle of this. So we're going to adhere these two pieces together. This is going to give us a beautiful little backdrop for our stocking. And then that's all going to go on the front of our card. And then all of that's going to go onto our card base. Isn't that so cute? I love that. And it looks totally different on here than it did on the other one, which is the beauty of doing these backgrounds like this. So I'm going to take some liquid glue and I'm going to put some liquid glue. Let's see if I can get, there we go. That'll work a little better. Oh yeah, we've got glue now. So what I want to do is just center this on top of my other, and this is the postage stamp um, dies. But we're going to do something else to our front of our, our piece before we put this down. We're just putting that together for right now. I'm going to put some glue, some um, stamping dimensionals on the back of my stocking. And then that's ready. Let's set that over there. We're going to take this piece and I want to run it through my exposed brick uh, embossing folder. So we are just going to line this up. I like to put it on the line that's on the folder. Something like that. Close it up and we're going to run this through. I'm going to do it over here on my electronic machine so I don't have to lift the other one. The lifting is quite hard for me to do. So I'm going to I'm going to do this one right here. So it's going to be a little noise. That clip never wants to go through. I think it's a little thicker than this one. So let's try it with that one. much better and let's look at that isn't it pretty look at the texture that i got on that vellum by running it through like this i love it and it also helps your adhesive to grab and hold so that's like um a double blessing so that worked really good this plate here is a little bit thicker than the stamping up plate so I just have to remember, and I have people question what electronic machine do I use? And I absolutely love the Big Shot Switch Plus, and that's the one that I have, and I have it right here on my desk. Makes it nice and easy to use. Okay, we got this ready, so we are ready to put this down. And if you look and you see any white that you don't like showing, you can take your scissors or your trimmer and trim that off. I'm okay with it. So I'm just ready to go ahead and put this onto my card. And to do that, I'm going to use some, let's say, like this, like that. I like it like that. So you can decide which way you want your piece to go on. Then we're just going to take this and lay it onto our card base. Press it down, and we need to do our stamping, so I'm going to need to load my stamp block, and I'm going to use this big one, 
Looks like it needs to be cleaned. It's let's see residue of ink on it. I usually try to clean these before I put them away, but sometimes I don't. I don't get quite there. All right, we're going to grab the Peaceful Season stamp set. This is in the new mini catalog, and we are going to grab the word Christmas and the word Mary. And I'm going to line this up on my work surface like I want it. And then pick it up just like that. Now I got it nice and straight because I was able to use the lines on my mat. And I am ready now to stamp that on this piece right here. So I want to stamp it in real red. So I'm going to take my ink pad to the stamp. Make sure I got a good coverage of ink. I got ink on the edge of my block, but that's okay. We're going to wipe that off. Then I'm going to put this down right about here. And I'm just going to let that sit there for a minute and let that ink transfer. So this is going to be a beautiful um, sentiment, big and bold. I love it. It's so pretty. So now we can take this sentiment and it's ready to go right here. And if you notice that it didn't get as much coverage as you like, you can restamp it. Or, or if you want use a MISTI or a stamp positioning tool, that would be a great thing uh, to do. I got something on my screen that needs to go away. There we go. Um, but I like that. I think it's got an old worn look. You can see what I'm talking about when I bring it up. I love that. So I'm going to go with it. I think it will go in a play perfect with our stocking. So I'm going to put that down and then glue this down. And then we are ready to put our stocking on. I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. And for my dimensionals on this, I'm going to scatter like one up and one down. And then one up and one down. And then one more up. And this will hold our sentiment label in place and pop it up a little bit to give it some dimension. Right there. Now this I'm just going to glue straight down. Just using some liquid glue. And I want this to be up just a little bit, maybe right about there. And we'll give that a press. And then we can take our backers off of our stocking. We can put our stocking right in the middle. It gives it a nice drop to put that on. Now we need to do something on the inside. So for my inside, I'm going to take my piece of white and I am going to cut this. This one is, let's cut this down to three and three fourths by five. So I'm going to do five this way. And then make sure it's three and three fourths this way. Just need to take a tiny bit off of it. Friends and family, 
are the true gifts of Christmas. So we're going to put that on the inside. And I'm going to stamp it in the same color, the red, the real red. This comes from that Peaceful Season stamp set. Some beautiful Christmas um, sentiments on this piece. That's all I want to do for this card. I think this is going to be beautiful on the inside. So I'm just going to take some liquid glue. And let's put this down right about here. And there is our card. I hope you've enjoyed um, watching me make this card. I hope I taught you a new trick. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Oops, wrong way. How about that? That's much better. Isn't that so pretty? I think it's just a really beautiful card. And you could use any uh, backdrop. If you have an oval, uh, some, anything decorative to put behind that stocking, it just really would be beautiful. So there is our card for today. I trust that you are having a wonderful week. And thanks so much for, for tuning in and spending a little bit of your day with me. God bless and keep you. And as I always say in closing, let everything that you do and say bring honor and glory to our Lord Jesus. He is worthy. And this is the reason for the season. Uh, they, don't, they don't call it Christmas for nothing. So let's never, ever take Christ out of Christmas. So with all of that being said, I hope that you have a lovely rest of the week. I will hopefully be back later this week with another card. And um, kind of taking this one day at a time. Anyway, God bless and keep you. I love you guys. Bye-bye.